Hello everyone, we now have the basic principles to create the evolutionary algorithm. In the future we will adapt it in order to create a genetic algorithm. As you can see I am working with the solution because I needed to restart the environment, but if you have followed my tutorial from the beginning and you are working with the same notebook, you will not have any problem to follow. I represented a four layer in your network, as you can see here, and it will be used to show you how we will structure the neural networks in order to answer the snake game. First, on the left, you can find the observation that we feed as input. It will come at every step when the environment just returns the observation space, and we just feed it in the neural network. In the center, you have two different layers that are used as hidden layers. If you remember the first tutorial I put about neural networks, you have seen that some gates need more than one layer in order to make a decision. And this is exactly why we need more than one layer. So the data flow will pass through these two hidden layers, or we might use more in the future model, we don't care. And after, we want to have a prediction to know which of the direction we should take. It could be moving up, down, left or right. Okay, let's dive into the code. We could simply use matrices, as i shown you in the previous video, and do the parallelization ourselves, but it would be very inefficient, because we already have libraries which does this using faster language, like C++. NumPy is one of them, so just type import NumPy as np. We can next create the class, which will be used as an agent to work in the environment. So I type class neural network, I init it, using the self of course, and we will first need to develop layers, self.tag layers, it will be a list, and I will also have the different outputs. In fact, we could have the same outputs integrated in the layer, but we will see in the future that it's better to split them, so just type np.once and we will feed this like that. We will edit it anyway in the future. After the init, we need to create the forward function, which will be used to pass this death forward self. If I want to calculate the forward pass, which means computing the output of the neural network based on the input, I need to calculate each layer starting by the first. We see as input, I will use the observation, which is given by the environment, and this leads me to add an input variable to my function. But here comes another problem. If I look at the observation given by the environment with the observations equals env dot reset observations dot shape, I have a 16 by 16 matrix given by the environment. However, in the neural networks we previously introduced, we see the observation are on a single dimension and not two. We will just flatten the observation space by typing observation equals observation dot reshape minus one. And it's not, oh yes, because I forgot the S. Yeah, observations dot reshape and I print it. And I see I have everything in a single matrix, so I can shape it and yeah, I got 256. We can see this joker, the minus one, flattened everything over a single dimension, a vector of 256 color in one dimension. As I said, we will use matrices operation and need to reshape for matrices format. And if you are not familiar with that, just look at the video I put in the description. Everything is covered. <laughs> As a demonstration, let's type an input layer equal np.arrange with five elements, and we will reshape it in a five or yes, five by one matrix, and we we'll print it, and we have here a simple input layer. Okay, so now we would create the weights of it. We just have to adapt it by weights tag layer equals np dot arrange ten dot reshape and we'll have two neurons for the five entries. Okay, so they are all connected. I will print them. And if you look 
quite carefully, you will find that we have five in the last and in the first dimension, so we won't have any problem with the multiplication. Okay, so now I can create my output layer by calling numpy.matmol weights layer with the input layer. And I can print it after. Okay, so I get 30 and 80. I will detect the calculus, so they will times zero because I distribute this zero and after the one, so plus one times one plus the two times two plus three times three plus four times four. And I should get 30. Okay, correct. Next, I will do the same for the second neural. So I distribute the weight. And now I can see I have correctly 30 and 80. This distribution using matrices works well. And this is what we will use in order to compute all elements of the layer simultaneously. Let's clean a bit. And we need to change this reshape for our input. So inputs equals input reshape minus one by one. So I will have everything on one column, one matrices. We clean again. And next uh, we can start by propagating through the layers. So for layer in self dot layers, I will store everything in my inputs because I don't need the previous layer. So inputs equals numpy.matmol with layer because it will hold the weights and then inputs, which will hold the value of the previous neurons. Next, we see that I need to activate my layer. So I will create an activation function with def activate layer. And I will return a mask with numpy.where taking the layer. And if it's over one or over it equals to one, I will return one, otherwise zero. Next, I validate my activate function. And I will simply show you how it works. So let's create some kind of array with numpy.ones times five divided by, no, oh, sorry. With a range five, I have only the three which passes the threshold and I will activate it. Activate. And yeah, I see I have only three ones, so everything is working well. Okay, so now I can activate my input. So inputs equals activate inputs like that. And the data will flow through the different layers being always multiplied by the weights, then activated and so on. Next, I will simply use an output layer, which is based on the matmol with the self output combined with the input. inputs like that. And next I return the activation of the output layer. Now we have something based that we could put in the layer, but we will see next that it's better to split it and to have the last activation separately. And I also def a mutate function, which will be used to generate new mutation to our agents. Okay, we have prepared our neural network. Let's detail a bit a problem which may arise now. When I look at my different outputs, I see that I can move up, down, left or right. But I cannot take more than one action at the same time. However, our neural networks will return one or zero, which means our networks may require more action when it can only take one. And the problems comes from our activation function. Right now, it only takes one or zero, but it doesn't consider values that could be intermediary, which would however be required for that. 
Just to show you an example, I will show you with import myplotlib.pyplot.splt and we create a space as the tranche between minus 3 and 3 and we will take a step of 0 0.02. Next, I will activate this function using my activate function. So I just put space in it. And I will plot the space and also the activation. So the space will be in blue and the activation will be in orange. Orange. Next, I will also add a title like neuron value in blue and once activated in orange with the all on on rule. I will also plot the axis plt.axvline for vertical zero color equals red with an alpha of 0 0.2. Same for the horizontal one. I just change the v with an h like that. And I can plot. And what I see here is my activation in orange and in blue what I have when the neuron takes the value. The blue is converted into the orange one. And I have a segment from 0 to 1 where I simply ignore it and consider it is 0 every time. It's okay to have some kind of limitation and we'll see when we do supervised learning that this is very important. But when we consider this algorithm, we need more possibilities than just 1 and 0. So I will take the activate function and I will slightly modify it. Instead, let's consider that we will keep the linear function between 0 and 1. If I'm above 1, I will simply keep it like that. But I will keep the segment between 0 and 1. I will do another mask here. If I'm under 0, I will do an p dot where layer inferior to 0, I will return 0. Otherwise, if I'm not in this negative part, I will return the space. And we have here a slight modification which allows more value. I will just change the title, like continuous activation. Yeah. And I see here that between 0 and 1, I allow more value to be here. There are actually quite a lot of values that can be taken by the neural networks. And we could also expand that to not only take values between 0 and 1. I have integrated in the LexML library multiple elements from LexML import LexML courses and in LexML courses get the display activation function. Just call it and you can see oftenly use activation function in neural network. We use the rel function, we use the sigmoid function which is between 0 and 1 and this will take all values we have, and this is the one we will use in our neural networks. You have next the soft plus, which goes from zero to plus infinity. And we have also the tan, which is less used today. Let's define now the softmax function. As I have here different outputs, I want them to not fire at the same time, I need to have one action because the environment only takes one action. And for this, we need to change our activation function, as I said before. This is the formula of the softmax function we will introduce. And compared with other kind of functions, which only apply to a neuron, this one applies to a layer. Let's see a bit more how it works and like just translate it into the code. We create a first array that would be a layer. Let's consider from 0 to 3 with np to arrange 4. We have here the exponents we will take first. So exponent of 0, then exponent of 1, of 2, and so on. And we will next divide this by the sum of all exponents. Def softmax activate. And it will take the layer as parameter. And we will first start by making the exponent of each element of the layer in the m variable. Let's test it. With np to terra range 4. 
And since I have no return, of course, it cannot work. So first, return. And there I have each value converted into its exponent. Well, let's keep going. We just have to place it in the n variable. And we will divide each of them by the sum of all exponential. We will next create the sigmoid function that I introduced previously, which allows us to have value from 0 to 1 as output, but it will consider all input from minus infinity to plus infinity. We just have to retake what we did for the softmax and we will slightly modify it. To sigmoid activate. So it will look like that. And we consider each neuron separately and we have to take one over one plus the exponential of minus the value. This will calculate for each single neuron the effect and we can check it. And we see here, sigmoid will not consider the value of other neurons in the layer compared to softmax. And if you sum everything, the sum of sigmoid will be more than one when the sum of softmax will be one. This is a property that I would like just to show you to have it in mind. It won't have any impact on the model we are creating now, but in the future, when we will work with supervised learning, you will see that it will be our solution to only focus on one single answer. And if you have sigmoid, you may return more than one action with softmax only one. Well, we validate and let's retake our neural network to adapt it with this activation functions like this. I will come back to my activate in the layers, replace it by sigmoid activation. And next, I will do the same here for softmax. So it doesn't matter here, but like has a good habit. It's quite good to work like that. So with the last multiplication I have for the output, I will pass it through softmax and I will only have one number selected like that. We created the skeleton and now we will initialize it. As you have seen, we need to specify what is the number of layer we want. And to do it, I will simply create a variable called nb tag layers and we'll initialize it at three, let's say, and also the number of neurons I want, which is 25. If you remember correctly, you have here all the number of neurons you want. Here I had a 10, but we will use 25 in our example. And when I had only two layers, I will use three in this example. Execute it. And I can tackle the code in the neural network class. I will add also the different layers. So for E in range and B tag layers, I will add to the self tag layers a random initialization in p.random.rand. If you recall how work the math multiplication, I need to have the neurons as first dimensions. So the 25 I want, which will be the output. And I will need next to have the input. But if I come back upper, I see my observation is 256 when I will have next 25 neurons, which means that for the future layer, I cannot use 25 every time as input. I need to adapt it if I got the 256 from the first layer. Therefore, I will create an entry size variable, which will be equal to my number of neurons, so 25 I have, if I am not in the first layer. So if E different from zero, then you the bracket here. Otherwise, it will be the size of my observation space. So observation tag size. And I will add this variable that would be need to be initialized with the neural networks at the same time. And next, I will simply reuse the entry size 
So I can create a matrix which will take the good number of neurons as entry. Okay, now let's get a look about what will give this random generation. I will replace my neurons by 25. And next, the entry size by the 16 times 16 matrices I'm supposed to have. 16 ICC. Okay. Now I see that I have everything between 0 and 1. But in the future, I may wish to have some value that would have a negative impact. If the snake is close to a wall, it's better for him to move away from it. So I would like to have some negative values. And to do it, I will just transform my matrix, multiply it by 2, so I will be from 0 to 2, and subtract 1 to every value, so I will be from minus 1 to 1. So if you recall with the sigmoid function, I will always have a positive number. And in this case, only way to get negative value is to have a negative weight when I multiply this entrance value by a negative number. Let's get back to the code and apply the modification. So we multiply by 2 and subtract 1. And after, we'll also add the biases. We will create them on the same format as we had for the layers. So we just copy the line, replace the entry size by one because we will have only one basis affecting the wall neurons we have at the end, and we change the name. If you are not familiar with the concept of addition of a bias to a matrix and why we have only a one here, just have a look on my video about matrices operation for neural networks. The link is in the description. Okay, so we edit our forward function. We add the bias after the matmol, so inputs equal inputs plus biases. Well, bias. And I will also add the bias in the for loop using a zip. So this way I can iterate through the layers and the bias at the same time and be able to apply them simultaneously. I will also modify the self output by a simple random round. But here I must take care because I won't have 25 neurons as output. I will have only four. So I replace it by four. And now you understand why it's better to split the output layer as we have done previously. Next, we will reshape the output layer because we prefer having just one single line by convention and we will then pass it through the softmax so everything will be normal. Once this is done, we can create a first sample of the neural network interacting. So we create an observation size that we need to pass to initialize layer. So observation tag size equals environment dot observation spade dot shape zero times environment well let's just copy it and here we could have just written 16 by 16 but let's make it dynamically next we create the sample based on the class neural network and we pass the observation size so we will have a neural network initialized with just random variables. And after we can determine what is the observation we will get from the environment.reset dot reshape minus one. So here the minus one is not necessary because anyway we resize it after. Choice will be equal to sample dot forward and we pass the observation in it. And after we will print the list of decision, combine with the choice that made the neural network. And after we will take the highest choice, like the neuron which fire the most, so choice.argmax. Okay, let's run it. And I have a mistake. Entry size. Entry size. Oh, yes. Not defined, so it will be neurons here. Okay, so we run an experiment in which we only applied one step. We have all four neurons which fired an information, but it is only the third neuron which was the strongest. So we say that the decision taken was two because we start from zero. And as you can see, the highest value is 0 0.38.
if we were to send this decision to the environment, we will just pass the argmax of choice in the env.step function. Final part, let's now initialize a real simulation with the environment. So we'll first start by importing time. So import time. And this will be used because we don't want the simulation to run too fast. We want to see it at least. And we use time.sleep to in order to have the time to click on it when we will run it. Next, we initialize the observation with the amp.reset. We will next render the environment. We wait two seconds so we can click on it without any problem and we initialize done as false. If you remember, while done won't be equals to false, it means the environment is still running. So the snake is still alive and didn't get the fruit or died. We will loop over the done variable while not done. We grab the observation. The re well, no need to reward. Just let's take the observation done and apply the env.step based on the sample that forward. We pass the observation dot argmax. The decision will be impacted in the environment. Next, we will render it. And finally, we will apply time.sleep for 0 0.1 second. We run it, we open it, and we see our snake is currently moving. That's all for this video. We have seen how we could create a small neural network that could pass the observation in order to make a prediction. In the next video, we will try to apply some kind of selection that will lead to the solution of the game. As usual, I added the notebook on the GitHub, so you just have to clone it. The link is in the description. Think about liking the video, subscribe, and so on. And I'll see you all next time.